Oh, what up? This a new episode right here. This will be volume five of my rap album update. You know what I'm saying? You guys know that I will be reviewing classic hip hop albums nonstop. You know what I mean? The album that I'm ready to talk about for a night. I've been wanting to review this album since fucking forever, but just never got a chance to do it. But the review is finally here. You know what I mean? I'm about to get to talk about one of my all-time favorite hip-hop albums. One of the greatest hip-hop albums of all time. It's a West Coast classic. This is an album that every hip-hop head should must own their collection. Doesn't matter if you have this on CD, vinyl, or cassette tape. You should must own it. You know what I mean? Because this album right here is the fucking shit. And I'm talking about the 1993 classic. This album right here. Snoop Dogg's first debut album, Doggy Style, released in 1993. Man, y'all gosh must know the deal about this album right here. Snoop's first album, released in 93. But at the time, he was known as Snoop Doggy Dog. You know what I mean? I mean, everybody in mamas should must know the deal about this shit right here. This is a fucking classic album. I mean... My top 25 favorite, if you ask me, you know what I'm saying? This is Snoop Dogg in his prime, in my opinion. Some of Dr. Dre's best production is future on this shit. I mean, this is G-Funk to its core, you know what I'm saying? You know, a lot of people like to compare it to The Chronic, as you're supposed to, because those two albums go hand in hand, you know what I mean? And I also got The Chronic in my collection. I will be doing a review on that on December on the 15th, so stay tuned for that shit, you know what I mean, you know, um, this is Snoop's first album, like I said, you know, released on Duff Row Records, the second release under Duff Row, you know, the first being was The Chronic, you know, it was a very critically acclaimed album, it was very successful when it first came out, you know, a lot of people call it album of the year, and, um, everybody, because, you know, Snoop, I mean, you know, Snoop appeared on a couple of tracks off the Chronic, and um, everybody loved him so much. Everybody was expecting a Snoop solo album, and guess what? This joint came out. You know what I mean? So um, before you know, get into you know history of how the album you know started, I'm gonna get you with the singles, all right? The singles that I was known for: Gin and Juice, What's My Name, and Doggy Dog World. Three videos, fucking classics, you know what I mean? So, yeah, before this album even came out, you know, Snoop Dogg, he was just a, you know, cat from the streets of Long Beach, California, you know, trying to make ends meet, you know, he was a crib, you know, doing his dirt on the streets. He got busted for selling drugs to an undercover cop, you know, he had to do some time in jail. As soon as he got out, you know, he started rhyming, and he hooked up with Warren G., and, you know, and Dr. Dre, and, um, in 1991, before Duff Row even came, you know, fucking worldwide, Snoop recorded a demo, you know, called Over the Counter, like I said, it was released in 91, the same year Duff Row first started, you know what I mean, but you can hear the whole demo on YouTube, the quality is kind of fucked up, but, it, but from what I heard, it was a very dope, um, demo, you know what I'm saying, like, this is, Pre doggy style, you know what I'm saying? So once Snoop recorded that demo, um, that after, you know, around this time, you know, NWA broke up and shit like that. It was like some money issues, you know, beef going on, you know, with especially, you know, with Ice Cube, you know, Dre and Easy, you know, Dre and Easy, they was like going back at it and shit like that. So, um, in 1992, um, Dr. Dre came out with his first solo single. Deep Cover, which appeared on the movie Deep Cover, you know, with Lawrence Fishburne, very dope movie, by the way, um, fucking underrated, if you ask me, um, you know, Snoop appeared on that song, you know, put Snoop out there, like, his fucking introduction to the world, like, basically, like, his first appearance on Wax mainstream, and once people heard Snoop, they was like, who is this guy, you know, saying, because of his, you know, his flow, like no other nigga was rhyming like Snoop back then, you understand. And people wanted more Snoop, 
you know what I mean? So once Deep Cover hit the airways, it was like a very big song back in 92. So once that song hit the streets, Dr. Dre came out with The Chronic, you know what I mean? His first album, you know what I'm saying? No, like I said, it's a hip-hop classic, one of the best of all time, one of my favorite albums. Yes, I do have in my collection, like I said before. Stay tuned for the album review of that. No, Snoop appeared on a couple of tracks. No, Corrupt and Daz, The Lady of Rage, Warren G, Nate Dogg, rest in peace, by the way. No, 213, and RBX. No, that's like the album that just fucking kept, just put Duff Row on the map. You know what I'm saying? And it just got Duff Row popping. You know what? Nothing but a G thing. Let me ride. Fuck with Dre Day. You know they dissing Easy E, Tim Dog, Uncle Roof from Two Live Crew. You no know, little ghetto boy. The day the niggas took over. I mean, stranded on Duff Row. These nuts. A nigga with a gun. Rat tat tat tat. I mean, bitches ain't shit. Fucking dope ass songs to that album. You know what I'm saying? Can't wait for a review, guys. Get ready to anticipate that shit. So, you know, Snoop appeared on, all, you know, some of the tracks of the album. You know, people still wanted some more Snoop. So, a year later, in 93, Snoop Dogg came off this album right here. Doggy Style. Now, fucking love the album cover for this shit. You know what I mean? I fucking, I remember when I was a little kid. Remember reading the magazine, I think it was like the Vibe, you know, Source, Double XL. Every time I see this album cover, I just fucking stare and just gaze at it for fucking hours. I just fucking love the whole design. Fucking classic album cover. It's like, uh, you see Snoop chasing the fucking puppy's ass in the doghouse. It's like the fucking dogs on top. Reciting some of George Clinton's lyrics. Why must I feel like that? Why must I chase the cat? Nothing but the dog in me. You know what I'm saying? Y'all guys must know a deal about that shit. You know, Parliament, Funkadelic, Atomic Dog, Classic. Just got the fucking dog inspector. You know what I'm saying? You know, the album cover was designed by Joe Cool. You know what I'm saying? By the way, this is the um digital remastered version back in you know, 2001. Because if you have the OG copy of Doggy Style, this album right here, it comes with a track, you No, know, on the OG version, has a track called G's Up, Hose Down. But it didn't make this version because, you know, due to sample clearances, like they used the Isaac Hayes sample. So that it just wound up, you no know, not being on a, um, the digital remaster. But if you have the OG copy of Doggy Style, you got to keep that shit because... G's up, holds down. That is my shit right there. You know what I'm saying? Um, only if it was on a digital remaster version. You know what I mean? But um, yeah. Like I said, this like I said, this is a digital remaster version. Around like 2001, you know, Death Row was like re-releasing. You know, the Chronic, this album, um, Dog Pounds, Dog Food, um. Tupac's All Eyes on Me and the Don Kuma 97 8 Theory and shit like that. You know, the gang release. I mean, they was reviewing, they was like re releasing all the shits. You know what I'm saying? So, that tells you right there. You know what I mean? If you can see right here, Digital Remaster. If you're a Death Row fan, you should must know that about that shit. And it comes in an enhanced CD. Also, have the video, What's My Name? You know what I'm saying? So like I said, this the album cover, the classic, iconic cover, top five for me, the back, see Snoop right here, see the track listing, actual CD, very dope, back, fucking clear. Brand fucking new. Jewel case. Just a plain jewel case. You know what I'm saying? Nothing to it. Alright. Hold on a second. Um, 
Oh, sorry about that, folks. I had to do some real quick. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I showed y'all the actual CE. Um, hope I can get this fucking thing out. Hold on. Here you go. Album cover. Back. See a young Snoop right here. Like that pick a lot. See, Suge Knight, Dr. Dre, the piece to the street shit. It's like a little intro for the comic. I wish I could show y'all a fucking booklet, but I don't want YouTube to take my, down my fucking video. But looking at the fucking booklet, the comics, fucking funny as hell. If you have the album, you should must know what I'm talking about. Because you know how pussy-fied YouTube are nowadays, you know what I'm saying? When it comes to fucking certain videos. Alright. The producers on this album are Suge Knight, by the way. Fuck Suge Knight. You know why. And Dr. Dre, the legend. The guest appearances on this album are The Dog Pound, a.k.a. Corrupt and Daz, D.O.C., R.B.X., the Lady of Rage, Nate Dogg, Warren G, The Dramatics, Little Malik of Illegal, of, you know, Dr. Dre, and Nancy Fletcher. Those are, like, the guest appearances. Uh, um, The late, great Ricky Harris, um, D, a.k.a. DJ Easy Dick. Rest in peace, by the way. You know what I mean? He passed away last year. You know what I'm saying? God rest his soul. All right? Okay, track number one, Bathtub. That's like a little intro, you know what I'm saying? You hear Snoop and his fucking girl, you know, chilling in the crib. You know, you know Snoop in the bathtub, you know, trying to get it in with his, um, oh, it's my bad, folks. Um, until his, you know, time was interrupted by his fucking homies and shit. F like, trying to throw like a damn house party and something like that, you know what I mean? Fucking funny, you know what I'm saying? I definitely like that intro. You know what I'm saying? Hit like some 70s funk track playing in the background. You know what I mean? Um, track number two, G Funk intro. Very dope track right there. That's like an introduction about to get ready to start off the album. You know what I mean? Like a short track. You hear Lady of Rage spitting. She fucking killed that shit. Very dope beat by Dr. Dre. Love that shit. You know what I'm saying? It definitely, you know, Sets the tone of this album, you know what I mean? Like, so amazing. If that, I wish that track would have been long, that should have been fucking fire, but more fire, more fire. But it was fire though, you know what I'm saying? You gotta believe it, you know what I'm saying? So, that was G Funk intro until track number three, Gin and Juice. That was a single, there's a video flat, classic song. Don't need to get into more that much detail about that shit. Everybody must know about that joint right there. Fucking classic. Hands down. One of my favorite songs of this album. Remember growing up listening to that shit when I was a little kid. Oh my god, man. This is the type of song that... That would never get old. I mean, seriously. Everybody in their mama should must know about this track. Um, Track number four. The Shiznit. Another one of my favorite songs of this album. That beat is fucking sinister, man. Snoop fucking did his thing on that joint right there. I mean, oh my god. I wish that should have been a fucking single. That's just me. You know what I'm saying? Like, Snoop fucking, he went off on that joint right there. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, I just really love the beat by Dre, though. I mean, like, I just fucking love the fucking organs and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, fucking crazy, yo. Yeah, that was the shit, isn't it? Track number five, Lottie Dottie. Um, on that song right there, he's paying homage to Slick Rick, you know, with Lottie Dottie. But around this time, you know, um, Slick Rick, you know, he was doing, he was going through his jail sentence and shit like that, due to a shooting. And, you know, Slick Rick didn't get out to like, um, 96, 95, 96-ish, you know what I mean? Because, you know, 94, um, Slick Rick came out with an album called, you know, Behind Bars. Very dope album, by the way. You know what I'm saying? I got to do a review on that album someday. I don't know when, but I will be doing a review on that. You know what I mean? So, yeah. You know, 
Snoop just paying homage to Slick Rick. Everybody paid homage to Slick Rick. I mean, but it's like Slick Rick, he's a fucking hip hop legend. You know I mean? One of my favorites. Like, the dude's a fucking great damn storyteller. You know what I'm saying? Like, I need to get, I mean, you got the, the great adventures of Slick Rick. I mean, what more can I say? Fucking masterpiece. You know what I'm saying? Dottie Dottie, you no know, classic. Snoop did that joint justice. You know what I mean? Fucking dope ass beat by Dr. Dre, as usual. Um, track number six, Murder Was the Case. Um, that features Das, Das Dillinger from the Dog Pound, or aka that nigga Das, whatever you want to call him. Fucking dope ass song, you know, very dark, you know what I mean? Very grimy. You, you, it's like Snoop have like a death experience, you know what I'm saying? Because some couple of motherfuckers out in the streets, you know, shot him and shit like that, you know what I mean? Just pretty much killed him. And, um, also around this time, you know, Snoop is actually, you know, he actually got arrested. Because I guess he was at, you know, the MTV um, Music Awards back in 93. And um, one of Snoop's um, body, you know, Snoop was like, they had like a little confrontation with a gang member. And um, one of the gang members got killed. And a lot of people accused Snoop of doing it. But it was actually his bodyguard that did it. But, you know, Snoop was going through his murder trial throughout like 94, 95. And Snoop was not guilty. He was innocent. You know what I mean? He got acquitted. We all, we all know about that. And also, that murder trial actually inspired the Murder Was The Case movie and soundtrack, which came out back in 1994. Fucking classic motherfucking soundtrack. I'm, I mean, like, probably one of my top favorite hip-hop soundtracks of all time, if you ask me. There is a remix. Me, personally, I like the remix a lot better than the album version. Although the album version is dope. But the remix version goes fucking hard. Straight up. Um, track number seven, Serial Killer, featuring DLC, RBX, and the Dog Pound. Another dope banger right here. Dope ass fucking posse cut. You know, Corrupt and Daz, they fucking went in. RBX went in. DLC, y'all guys must be familiar with him. You know, no one could do it better until he had his fucking voice fucked up in a, in a um, car crash. And shit like that. You no, know, around this time, you know, Snoop, um, excuse me, DOC, he was, you know, fucking with Death Row. You know what I'm saying? Right after Ruthless. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, but, you know, he used to write some of the tracks, you know, for Death Row, for Dre, and, you know what I mean? Um, they, they all fucking go crazy on that shit, you know what I mean? Especially fucking Corrupt. He fucking stole his show on that shit, if you ask me. Fucking like the beat for that joint. You know what I mean? Like this whole track is nuts. That's all I have to say. Um, track number eight. Who am I? What's my name? That was like the first single off the album. There's a video for that. Classic, 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 classic song right there. I mean, another one of my favorites, man. Growing up, listening to that song, man. Fucking, I don't need to get into that shit. You know what I mean? And we also... Jay Z paid homage to that song on Jigga My Nigga off the Rough Riders Ride and Die Volume 1 album, which came back in 1999. Very dope album, very dope song by Ho, you know what I mean? Um, track number nine for all my niggas and bitches featuring the Dog Pound and the Lady of Rage. That song right there, oh my god, man, fucking. Flames, man. Bonkers. Corrupt. In my opinion, he fucking murdered that shit. He stole the show. I don't give a fuck what nobody says. Dad's fucking... He, he did that joint justice. So is Rage, but Corrupt, man. I gotta give it to Corrupt. You know what I mean? He fucking murdered... He, he went off in that shit. You know what I mean? He had the best verse. He fucking killed that shit. He stole the show. That's all I gotta say. Um, Track number 10. Ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. Everybody know the dope about that joint as well. Probably one of the best songs of this album. Nate Dogg, rest in peace, by the way. Warren G and Corrupt. You know, classic. You know what I'm saying? Very dope. Um, track number 11. Doggy Dog World featuring the Dog Pound and the Dramatics. That was like the last single off the album. There's a video for that. 
one of my favorite songs of this album. Amazing fucking track. Dope ass video. You see them at a fucking like a in the 70s party and shit with the 70s costumes. You see Antonio Vargas on the video. Um Fred Berry, aka Rerun from What's Happening. Rest in peace, by the way. I mean, you, you Ricky Harris. I mean, you see a lot of motherfuckers on the video. A lot of OGs. You know what I'm saying? The fucking classic. You know what I mean? You know, the dramatics. Like, they're like doing the background vocals. They're like a very, you know, they're like a 70s funk R&B band. You know what I mean? From the 70s and shit like that. And, um, you know, they collaborated with Snoop. You know what I mean? Track number 12, G's and Hustlers. Fucking dope ass song right there. You hear a very young Bow Wow on there. And you also see a young Bow Wow on the Jen and Juice video. I forgot to state that. But this, because you understand, around this time, you know, Snoop was actually the one who discovered Bow Wow before Jermaine Dupri. You know what I'm saying? So, have to throw that out here. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, G's and Hustlers, you know, fucking classic song right there, you know. The Isaac Hayes. Oh my god, man. Classic, y'all. That's all the guys say. This is for the G's. This is for the hustlers. That's my shit, yo. And the last track, track number 13, Pump Pump, featuring Lola Malik from Illegal. One of my favorite songs in this album. Great way to end the album right there. Fucking dope ass. That beat is fucking crazy from Dr. Dre. Malik, he fucking stole the show on that song. Snoop fucking wreck shock on that shit as well. His fucking bars is impeccable. I mean, the whole song, man, is the bomb. And you also know that if you have the OG copy, came with four G 14 tracks, which is G's Up, Holds Down. I'll explain that. Classic. Another one of my favorite joints from Snoop. One of my favorite joints from this album as well. You know what I mean? But like I said, I got the digital remaster because it only comes with 13 tracks. You know what I mean? Okay. By far, it's a fucking hip-hop classic right here. Snoop's best album. I mean, what more can I say? I mean, a West Coast classic. One of the best hip-hop albums of all time. One of my favorite hip-hop albums ever made in hip-hop history. I mean, this album really played a big part in the whole G-Funk sound. Just like the Chronic, Warren G's Regulate G-Funk era, and the Dog Pound's Dog Food. But out of them, this is like my favorite one right here. I mean, I love how funky and street is, it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, so fucking phenomenal. The sequencing is superb. The skits are funny as hell. The beats by Dr. Dre are fucking sick. Dr. Dre in his prom, one of his best beats are featured on this album. I mean, Snoop, he just fucking... Snoop, back in 93, Snoop was the man. I mean, straight up, he was that motherfucking nigga. I mean, 93, I mean, you have fucking, you know, Snoop, Dre, Wu-Tang, A Tribe Called Quest, Tupac, I mean, Onyx. I mean, the list goes fucking on and on and on. I mean, Red Man. Naughty by Nature, I mean, everybody was fucking killing that year 93, hell, even Scarface, man, I mean, 93 was the shit, yo, you gotta say that, you know what I mean, but 93 was Snoop's year, sorry, I have to say that shit, 93 was Snoop's year, Snoop fucking owned that year, you know what I mean, just like Jay did 01, just like Biggie did 97, just like, you no, know, fucking Tupac did 96, Snoop did 93. And just like how Red Man did 92. You know what I mean? It's so crazy how after this album, a lot of people always want to diss Snoop because of his, you know, albums like The Dog Father, you know, um, The Game is Sold, Not to Be Told. They always be talking shit about Snoop, talking about, oh my, talking about, oh fuck Snoop, but he only came out with one dope album, and that was this. If you motherfuckers would do your research, y'all got to know that Snoop came out with fucking dope albums after Doggy Style. For example, No Limit Top Dog, The Last Mill, The Blue Carpet Treatment, 
th those shits right there are fucking hot. Those are some of the snoopest. Oh, excuse me. Those are one of Snoop Dogg's finest works, in my opinion. I mean, let's not front act like Snoop didn't come out with a dope albums after Doggy Style, like he did. You know what I'm saying? He actually did. I guess when the dog fighter came out, y'all motherfuckers was trying to hate on Snoop Dogg because of his. I mean, like, because you gotta understand. The reason why motherfuckers hate, you know, the dog father and on uh, the game is so not to be told. Including myself. I don't I don't like the game is so not to be told. But the reason why, because there was no Dre production. Cause because you gotta understand Snoop sounds ill on Dr. Dre production. And there's no denying that. I just it just it just kills me when motherfuckers always want to talk shit about Snoop because of that. Talking about Oh, Snoop only came up with one good album. Like, go listen. If you think Snoop came up with one good album, go listen to No Limit, Top Dog, and The Last Mill, in the Blue Carpet Treatment, and let me and see what the fuck you think about that. And see what you guys say. You know what I mean? But, but, those albums can't touch this. I have to say that, of course. You know what I mean? This is Snoop's magnum office. Hands down. This album goes neck to neck with the Chronic, you know what I mean? As I could like to compare it to, almost everybody does, because those both albums right there are like G Funk, fucking, oh my god, how fucking G Funk masterpieces, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like the, you know, Hell Up in Harlem version of the Chronic, if you ask me. And the Chronic is like Black Caesar, if you get what I'm saying. Like, it's like the Lola Brother of the Chronic. That's all I have to say. You know what I mean? Snoop's best album. Snoop in his prom. Fucking classic. Amazing. Hands down. Top 25 favorite album for me. You know what I'm saying? I'm so glad to own this album in my collection. Won this album for fucking years now. You know what I mean? So, yeah. If you're a fan of Snoop Dogg. If you're a fan of Dr. Dre. If you're a fan of West Coast Sip Hop. G Funk. Or if you're a fan of anything that came out of Duff Row Records, or if you're a fan of 90s hip hop, this is the album for you. So this is Snoop Dogg, Doggy Style, released in 1993. Must cop, definitely a classic. That was it for volume 5 of my rap album update. Hope y'all enjoy it. Salute.